Hi everyone, it's Tatiana from Tatiana's Everyday Food and welcome back to my kitchen. So I recently got back from my trip to Washington State where I got to visit my family and friends and I had such a wonderful time. The fall colors are just so breathtaking there. The air is so refreshing. I'm a little jealous because here in California we get fall a little bit late. So I was really enjoying my time there and it inspired me to share some more fall recipes with you guys. So today we're making a maple pecan cake with salted caramel frosting and we're gonna add some caramelized sugar garnish to the top. Now this is a brand new garnish to my channel so I'm gonna walk you through all the steps on how to make it. Let's get started and I'll show you how to make this phenomenal cake. In a large bowl, I'm gonna combine half a cup of softened butter with three fourths cup of white granulated sugar and our flavors. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract and two teaspoons of maple extract. And I'm gonna use a mixer to cream the butter and sugar together. And once I have those ingredients creamed together, I'm gonna to add in three large eggs and mix those in with the mixer as well. I'm gonna add in one fourth cup of pure maple syrup along with one fourth cup of milk. And now for my dry ingredients, I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. Just use a spoon and toss those together. I'm going to sift in my flour using a fine mesh strainer and give it a good mix after each addition. So when you're adding your flour into your cake batter, you wanna be careful not to over mix it, otherwise you're gonna end up with a thick and dense cake. So mix it just until it's combined, and at the very end, we're gonna add in one cup of chopped pecans, and I'm just gonna fold these in by hand. And now it's time to bake our cakes. So I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then I've lined two eight inch cake pans with some parchment paper, and I'm just gonna divide the cake batter evenly between the two pans, and we're gonna pop these in the oven and bake them until the top is completely set. And you can always check by inserting a toothpick into the center, and when it comes out clean, they're ready to come out of the oven. So I have my cake layers cooling, and meanwhile, I wanted to give you guys a quick tutorial for the sugar art that I'm gonna add on top of this cake. Um, so for this little project, I wrapped two glasses with some parchment paper, and then into a small saucepan, I'm gonna add in half a cup of white granulated sugar, along with three tablespoons of water. I'm gonna take this sugar over to the stovetop, and I'm gonna cook it over a medium low heat until it caramelizes into a rich amber color. I just took my sugar syrup off the stove top and at this point it's really, really hot so you wanna be careful with it. I'm actually just gonna stir it around for about a minute so it thickens up a little bit and then it'll be much easier to work with. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna swoop it back and forth over the prepared parchment paper, just like this. And some of it will drizzle down and that's perfectly okay. And this sugar is gonna harden really fast. So I'm just gonna let it sit here for about a minute and then we'll be able to take out the parchment paper and break it into pieces to garnish our cake with. And now for my simple salted caramel frosting. So today I'm gonna to be using a 14 ounce can of dolce de leche, which is cooked sweetened condensed milk. And I love that this uh, caramel is really, really thick. Um, if you can't find dolce de leche, you can use a regular caramel, but you'll just have to add a little bit more powdered sugar to reach the right consistency. I'm just gonna place all this into my mixer bowl. I'm gonna add in half a cup or one stick of softened butter and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna mix this with a mixer until it's really light and fluffy. Next, I'm gonna add in a few tablespoons of heavy cream. And I'm gonna start adding in my confectioner sugar. So I'm gonna add about two cups of powdered sugar. I'm gonna add about half a cup at a time and give it a good mix after each addition. And now it's time to assemble the cake. So today I split my cake layers in half, so I have a total of four, but you can keep it at two if you want to. So I'm gonna add a generous amount of frosting between each cake layer. Just pile it right on top. And I use this flat spatula and just spread it evenly to the edges. Now if you wanna add even more maple syrup flavor, you can soak the cake layers with a little bit of syrup as well. 
I'm gonna follow with my second cake layer and I'm gonna repeat the exact same thing for my remaining three layers. I'm gonna add my last cake layer and now I'm just gonna frost the top and the sides of my cake. After decorating my cake, I put it into the refrigerator for about 20 minutes to allow the frosting to set up a little bit. And now I'm ready to add my garnishes. So I'm gonna top my cake with the sugar garnishes that we made earlier. And I'm just gonna arrange these completely randomly across the top of the cake to get them a nice and unique look. So prop it right on top, wherever you see fit. And that's it for our maple pecan cake. So I recommend keeping it stored in the refrigerator for a couple hours so that frosting and that cake can set together. And now it's time to give it a try. And I want to say that the sugar garnish is also edible. So you could put it to the side and then break it into little pieces and eat it later. So let's take a nice piece of this maple cake. Mmm. I love all the flavors in this cake. You get so much of that rich, tasty maple flavor. It comes through from the maple extract and the maple syrup that we added, and it's perfectly complemented with the salted caramel frosting, which goes so well with this recipe. And I love those little bits of the crunchy pecan nuts in here. They add so much flavor to this cake. You guys are gonna love, love all the flavors here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video recipe. If you have a harvest or a Thanksgiving get together coming up, this cake is gonna be the perfect finish to any meal. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.